Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at Docker Universal Control Plane, the easiest way to manage your Docker environment. I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And that brings us to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you can see here we've got a quick view of all the applications, containers, images, and the infrastructure we're running on, as well as the memory and CPU being utilized, and a general health of our cluster controllers. One thing you'll notice is the word Swarm Manager here. That's because Universal Control Plane is backed by Docker Swarm. And in this case, we're using a spread strategy from Swarm. If we drill down into our nodes here, you can again see the health of the nodes and some other information, such as the kernel version and, and file system driver. This is new. If I click Add Node here, I can add a new Docker node. I can set a bunch of various options and copy this off to my clipboard, and then I'll just paste that into my Docker host, and a new node will be stood up for me. Let's go into Users and Teams here. I'm going to go here. You can see I've created a couple of users. If I create a new user, I can specify the username, the password, the first and last name, and make them an admin, and I can also set the default access permissions. We'll go ahead and cancel out of this. For Teams, we can use them to set permissions for groups of users, so I'll click on Permissions. All permissions are based on labels, so if a container is labeled Production, the engineering team has no access or restricted control or full control depending on the label. The Ops team, on the other hand, they actually have full control for all of those labels. So let's go over here and look at a few more settings. We'll start here. We can look at remote logging. We can set up an authentication method, manage or LDAP. Manage being a local uh, store. Uh, we can configure DTR, licensing, anonymous usage reporting, and the scheduler. Again, this is new as well. We can prevent containers to be scheduled on our UCB controllers by selecting one of these options. So let's go ahead back to the dashboard. You can see here, actually, I have no applications running. I'm going to go ahead and fire up a new application. Click over here in Applications, and this is new as well. I can compose right here in the UI. So I'll just give my app a name. I'll load up a Docker Compose file, and you'll see in this Compose file that we're going to deploy about five containers, um, Redis, Postgres, and some custom containers. We're also going to create a volume and a network. So I'll click Create, and we'll go up and spin that up. It's done here, so we'll move over. Now you can see my voting app is running. I've got those five containers. Let's drill down into those. I'm going to pick the Redis container down here. And here you can see a lot of information about the container. We can look at the uh, details, the configuration. We can take a look at the logs for the container, get some performance statistics for the container. Scroll down, we'll see memory and network, and CPU will come back. There it is. And we can even issue commands into the container. We can restart it, stop it, scale it, rename it, and even remove it if we need to. Additionally, if we go back over here to containers, we can deploy a new container. So I'll come over here, I'll click containers. I'll click deploy container and I'll give my uh, image name that I want to pull from. So there's the image name. I'll give the container a name. Call this one BusyBox Test. Um, that's that permissions label I mentioned before, as well as set a restart policy. Uh, I'll come down here in Container Config. I'll tell it to run the top command. We'll give it about 2 gigs of memory and a C one CPU share. You can see here, if you've set up containers before, all this should look very familiar. We can specify networking options. Volumes, constraints, labels, the whole the whole ball of wax. Click Run Container, and you can see my BusyBox test container running up there at the top. So let's come down here and look at volumes. Remember that my Docker Compose file set up a volume. So we can see that here. The DB data volume was set up on my hosts. And if I wanted to create a new volume, I could do that as well. Give it a name, select a driver, supply any options, click Create, and a new volume would be created. And just like volumes, we actually created a network with my Docker Compose file. So there's my vote app network. If I want to create a new one, I can give it a name, like my net, choose the overlay driver or any other driver, set IPAM options, click create, and there you go. There's the voting app. And if we look for my net, there's the network I just created. And finally, images. I can manage all my Docker images. I can pull a new image down. So let's pull down Alpine. I click pull, pulls this, in this case, from Docker Hub. Could also pull from an integrated Docker Trusted Registry. And of course, if I wanted to, I could remove that image. So if I come over here and click the X, that image would be removed. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. If you need more information, go ahead and visit us at www.docker.com.